is so great to be back together again. I saw a few more superheroes coming up on Facebook this week, and I sure did love getting to meet them. It's not too late to create your own superhero and post it, or introduce us to one of your superheroes who's been out there on those front lines. I know we have a bunch right here in our own church. And I know that some of your grandparents or aunts and uncles are out there on the front lines as well. And we want to get to meet them. So get those pictures up so we can stay connected, okay? Well, I guess we should get started so we can learn about this week's hero. The story starts out when our hero was just a boy. His name was Joseph, and he was the youngest of 12 sons born to a man named Jacob. Joseph was not like any of his brothers, and his father knew it. Joseph had a very powerful gift. He had the ability to interpret dreams. Do you know what that word means, interpret? Well, that's a bigger word for some of our littler friends that join us. And I'll let you know that it means that he was able to make sense of dreams and decode them to find a message God was trying to send to the person who was dreaming that dream. I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty neat super, super power to have. Well, Joseph's dad began to show more attention to him as he grew up, and his brothers began to notice it. On one particular day, his father brought home a beautiful robe made out of all sorts of beautiful colors. In those times, that robe would have been ultra rare and very expensive. His brothers did not like this. Why should he get a special robe? Why must he get all the attention? As they grew more and more jealous of Joseph, Joseph began to become more vocal about the special ability or superpower of dream interpretation that he had. One morning, Joseph went to his brothers and said excitedly, Guess what? Last night, I had the weirdest dream. Oh yeah? Their brothers said, rolling their eyes. Yeah, he replied excitedly. We were tying up a bunch of wheat out in the field when suddenly my bunch of wheat stood up while all of your wheat bowed down to me. The brothers looked at each other and gave them a look, gave each other a look, but Joseph continued. Then I had another dream that the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowed down to me. Now this made them mad. Who does he think he is? How dare he suggest that one day we will bow down to him? Nope, nah, -uh, no way. We have got to get rid of Joseph and we've got to do it fast because this is just too much. So the brothers huddled up and came up with a plan. They threw him into a big hole and they decided that they were going to leave him there. It wasn't long before an important man named Potiphar came along. Now Potiphar was the assistant to the Pharaoh of Egypt, and he offered the brothers money in exchange for Joseph. They agreed and figured that this would surely be the end of their brother. They wouldn't have to look at him, they wouldn't have to talk to him, they wouldn't have to hear his dreams, and he would surely be forced to do all of the awful jobs for Pharaoh. And they thought for sure that Joseph would now be destined to have a miserable life. Well, it's true that there were some bumps in the road for him and poor Joseph had some hard times while at the palace. As the years went by, though, Pharaoh began to have some dreams and he he needed to know what they meant, so he called for Joseph to come at once. He asked Joseph, Is it true that you can understand dreams? Pharaoh asked him. Joseph looked at him and said, I can't on my own, but God has helped me to learn how to interpret these dreams. 
Well, after Pharaoh told him about his dream, Joseph explained to him, God is warning you. There will be seven years when nothing will grow and there won't be any food for anyone. But what can I do? Pharaoh asked. Joseph replied, God has shown you what to do. There will be seven years before the bad years that will be very good. So good, in fact, that there will be extra food for everyone. So you must save a little bit of each year's harvest so that there will be enough to get us through the bad years. Pharaoh believed all that Joseph had told him and put him in charge of all of the land of Egypt. People came from all countries to buy grain from Joseph because the whole world was in need of food. Some of these people were Joseph's brothers. When his brothers came, Joseph recognized them right away, but they didn't know who he was. After all, it had been 10 years since they had last seen him. All the brothers bowed down to him because he was this important person. It was just as he had dreamed they would at the beginning, but they still had no clue who he was. After a few meetings with his brother, he couldn't keep it in any longer. And Joseph blurts out, guys, it's me, it's Joseph. Where's dad? Is he alive? Is he okay? His brothers couldn't answer because they were afraid. Here he was an important person who held the power to deny them food. And years earlier, they had done all they could to destroy him. But Joseph was gracious and he showed compassion. And he said, guys, it's okay, please don't worry. And, and honestly, don't be angry at yourselves for selling me because God has used that time to put me here to save people from starving. Joseph knew it was because his brothers had sold him that he was able to be at the right place at the right time. And that even though they had tried to ruin him, God used the hardest times in his life to help him save an entire nation. You know, God can use us too. He can use you and he can use me. He's already preparing you and giving you the skills you will need to grow his kingdom and to do his will doesn't have to be something as big as dream interpretation or living in a palace to save a nation from famine, but God has a plan for each and every one of us, and he is preparing us now for the time when we will be needed. Our memory first talks about being strong in the Lord. The past three weeks, we have seen some pretty young people do some pretty big things, but it was God's strength that carried them through. As you continue to memorize your verse, remember that we can do just about anything with God, and that it's his power resting on us that will get us through. Well, friends, I guess that's it for today. I miss you all so much, and I cannot wait to get to see you again next week. So make sure you tune in, all right? Okay, can't wait to see you then. Bye!